بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد الله ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أصابكم من مصيبة فبما كسبت أيديكم ويعفو عن كثير صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي المجيد الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد There's an article by Hadrat Sheikh Mufti Abdurrahim Lajburi Sahib نور الله مرقده and somebody asked Hadrat a question regarding that why is it that if you could shed some light upon this point that why is it that throughout the world Muslims are suffering and lots of distress is taking place in the world what is the cause behind this that Muslims are facing riots, massacres, persecutions, killings exiled from their homes so what is the reason behind this could you shed some light upon this in the light of Quran and Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Hadr Mufti Sahib, Mufti Abdul Rahim Sahib Lajpuri Rahmatullahi wrote back uh, an answer which was published into a book called Wabale Ilahi Ke Asbab or Unka Ilaj, which means the reasons for Allah's anger and the ways for the remedy to cool the anger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then it was later on translated into English. Uh, and now, mashallah, we have this in front of us in book form. So I will quickly, this is quite a lengthy article. I will, I will only go through a bit of the article, just to give us a bit of an insight and understanding as to why Allah is angry with the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa All of us can say this, Allah ta'ala is angry. We can see what is happening around us. So Hadr Mufti Sahib mentioned Rahmatullah that there are several reasons for the sad state of affairs of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but in particular there are few that stick out. Number one, the lack of true faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The level of Iman that I should have, that level is not there. The level of Iman that I should be having, it is not there. That Iman that should help me to get close to Allah, I don't have it. That Iman that stops me from haram, I don't have it. That Iman that wakes me up in the night to cry to Allah, I don't have it. That Iman which forces me to become a sincere, obedient ummati of Rasulullah, I don't have it. So number one, lack of true faith and Iman in Allah Ta'ala. This is one thing which is missing. Number two, Mufti Sahib mentions, okay, increased disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wherever you see, Wherever you look, people are disobeying Allah Ta'ala without any problem. Openly, casually, disobedience is taking place. And yet still we don't even bat an eyelid, we don't even feel, we don't fret, we don't feel any hurt where people are committing sins openly. We see it daily taking place, but I don't feel anything. And upon this is one point that comes to my mind. Allah Ta'ala does not put from the hadith, we learn this. Balki Hadra Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Hadra Ayatul Siddiqa, in the commentary we learn that we learn that that Allah Ta'ala will not just punish people because of the sins that they commit but when the pious people do not stop them from sins then Allah will punish the people so those of us who think I come to masjid it's fine and I don't have to do amal bil ma'roof nor do I have to do nahin al munkar then we are at greater loss understanding this another reason why Allah Ta'ala is angry and we see suffering and distress at, a, at an international scale throughout the world is due to the love of the materialistic world Hubbud dunya wal mal we have fallen in love with the world none of us are ready to sacrifice our dunya for the sake of deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another reason open disobedience against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam each one is a mustaqil bayan in itself I'm going through this very quickly another reason why Allah Ta'ala is angry is because we are following our own innovated bid'ah and pra- practices. That whatever I think, 
اور جو اصل دین ہے اس کو میں جو ہے پشے پس ڈال رہا ہوں another reason is I am neglecting the حقوق of Allah and the حقوق of عباد so حقوق اللہ and حقوق العباد the rights of Allah and the rights of creation I am neglecting another reason is which I think is a big reason in our, in our lives which I think is one of the important ones is our complete ingratitude and na shukri to the innumerable blessings and na'mat showered upon us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us so much health, wealth, izzat, honor, dignity, sukoon, tranquility, itminan, contentment, family, children, wife, home, job, profession, nice occupation, good friends, sab ko jalla ne hamid diya hai, but still our level of ingratitude is at a complete high level. Allah save God all of us. Yani, na shukri ki be in, yani, na shukri ki intiha, that we have transgressed all limits in showing ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last one, which is increasing now, is disregard for the advices of the ulama who teach us regarding the religion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when people come from outside and want to teach us deen, we invite scholars to come and teach us deen. We don't see a majma, we don't see people sitting down together showing interest in wanting to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala says to us in the Quran Sharif, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةً That whatever misfortune comes upon you, جَوْبِ تُمِ مُصِيبَةً حَاتْ لَغِغِي Whatever me and you will experience of misfortune, فَبِمَا كَسْبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ It is because you have earned it yourself with your hands. Whatever is happening in the world is because I have done that. I am responsible for what is happening in the world because of my own sins. وَيَعَفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Allah then says, and for many of them He grants forgiveness. Allah still forgives so much of our sins, but yet still so much sins we are doing, Allah still forgives so many, but at the same time, the consequences of our sins are such that we can see the negativity taking place around us now. Allah Ta'ala elsewhere in the Quran Shri mentions Dahar al-Fasadu fil barri wal bahri Mischief has appeared on land and sea bima kasabat aydin nas because of what the hands of man have caused. So all these taklifs we see in the world, these misfortunes, these problems, Allah says, why? لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي so that Allah may give them a taste of their own deeds. It's like a taste of your own medicine. You did this sin, now you suffer this illness because of it. You did this sin, now you should feel this uh, effect because of that sin. And what is the outcome should be at the end? So that we learn the lesson and that we turn back from them evil sins and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever is happening in the world, all of this should make us turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. So this is one reason that we see the world is in a turmoil, that me and you are committing sins. Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq to overpower this problem. Another reason is that we have left the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one of the another big crimes that we are committing, that we follow everybody else's way and we like their methodology and their fashion but we don't like the way of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's one hadith which is mentioned in books of, uh, of, of, of hadith where Rasulullah said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَنْ حَفَدَ سُنَّةِ أَكْرَمَهُ اللَّهُ بِأَرْبَعِ خِسَالٍ Whoever safeguards my sunnah, Allah will grant you four qualities. Now this is an ajeeb hadith. If a person follows the sunnah of Rasulullah, hafada meaning he brings it in his life, he lives on it, he propagates it, he follows it up, he teaches it, he is an, he is, he's a model, he's molded his life into the sunnah method, the prophetic method, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah ta'ala will honor him, akramahullahu bi arba'i khisalin. Allah, will, Allah says, I will give you four honors. Number one, al-muhabbatu fi kulubil Barara. Number two, Walhaybatu fi kulubil Fajara. Number three, Wasa'atu fi rizq. And number four, Wathikatu fi deen. Aukma qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So number one, by following sunnah and having sunnah in our life, Allah says, I will make you beloved in the hearts of all of my pious people. Every pious person will love you. And that is what we want. So they can make dua for us. Hadrat Haji Imdadullah Muhajir Makki would say, Rahmatullahi, that if you perpetually want to be in the rahmat of Allah 24 hours of the day, then enter inside the heart of a pious person. Let, your, let him make dua for you. Be inside the heart of a pious person because 24 7 it rains rahmat upon the hearts of the awliya Allah. So by entering inside their hearts, by being beloved in the eyes of the pious people, you will become beloved in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah give all of us tawfiq. So following sunnah, this is the first thing that will happen, that the pious amongst us will love you, will love all of us. Number two, again an important one, remember, creating a fear in the hearts of the enemies of Allah is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me repeat that again. Creating fear in the hearts of the enemies of Allah is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the na'mat of Allah. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. say, okay, my enemies are one month journey away from me and they begin to fear me. Sahabai Karam, ashidda'u ala al-kuffar. They were rigid, strict, staunch. So, this, the fact that this has been taken away is also a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Famous hadith, يُشْرَكُ الْأُمَنْ أَنْ تَدَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَمَا تَدَاءَ الْآكِلَةُ قِسْعَتِهَا A time will come when the whole nations of the disbelievers will call one another upon you. Just like a person calls one another to a platter of food to eat. So, Sahaba Ikram said, فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ وَمِنْ uh, will we be small in number that people kufar will attack us in such manner? And the Rasulullah said, No, but antum yawmaidin kathir. But you will be in immense number, but you will be weak, just like the, the hay and the froth on top of a, a flood. And some, when the ocean, the waves crash against the shore, and then you have foam and some bubbles that come on the top, you will become like that. And then, وَلَيَنزِعَ عَنَّ اللَّهُ فِي مِنْ قُلُوبِ مِنْ قُلُوبِ مِنْ عَدُوبِكُمْ مِنْ قُلُوبِ عَدُوبِكُمْ الْمَحَابَةَ مِنْكُمْ Allah Ta'ala will snatch your fear away from the enemy's hearts. No one will be scared of you anymore. And then in return, وَلَيَقْذِفَنَّ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ الْوَهَنْ Allah will put wahan in my and your hearts. We are living with wahan right now, all of us. According to the prophecy of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sahaba Ikram said, what is wahan? Qala qailun, famal wahanu ya Rasulullah, what is wahan? So Rasulullah said, Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul mawt. That love for this world and hatred to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our conclusion. When that will happen, don't expect the Muslims to be united. Don't expect that you will love one another. Don't expect that you can help one another. We are so weak. Sahaba Ikram was shocked. Women killatin nahnu yawmaidin. That the whole world will attack us. Will we be so less in number that they will have the audacity to attack us? We can't understand. So the Sunnah said, No. Well, antum yawmaidin kathir. You will be 1.34 billion in the world, but you will be so weak. Just like the froth and the bubbles that you pop with your finger what rise upon the water when you go to the seaside. This is my your condition. And what is the root cause for this? All of us, hubbud dunya, we are slaves of this world. Hadr Ali Karram, what used to say? La takunu min abana'i dunya wa kunu min abana'i akhira. Don't become the slaves of this world, become the slave of akhira. And number two, wa karahiyatul maut, hatred for death meaning hatred to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can say khulasa ke tor par ye bhi kaha ja sakta hai that the reason why the ummah is suffering today is because all of us have fallen in love with the world without any exaggeration and we don't like to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now if i say i don't love the world only i can judge myself 
If I say I love my Allah, only I can judge myself. But I know the reality of my life, you know the reality of your life. So I was saying, creating fear in the heart, now you understand this statement. Creating fear in the hearts of the enemy is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that the kuffar would fear you was a blessing from Allah. Now that they don't fear you, it is a sign that Allah Ta'ala is upset with this ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe there was a time when, I think I mentioned this on Juma as well, where the likes of Mu'tasim Billah, Rahmatun Ali, Khalifatul Muslimin, and in the Dori Khilafat, that if, if the horse wouldn't drink from the water trough, they used to say to the horse, drink, Mu'tasim is coming. They used to scare the animals with the with the names of the Mujahideen. Okay, drink. And the children go, they go to sleep at night. Go to sleep. Go to, Slahuddin is coming. Slahuddin is coming. They would become scared and fearful. But now no one is scared of the Muslims. No one even feels that Muslims, they have this power. It is found in books. Okay, when the rabbis begin to, when they saw the, the majma of, of, subhanallah, of the Muslims, in Masjid Aqsa Sharif on the day of Jumu'ah that the whole streets were full, the whole old city was full, the compound of Aqsa was overcrowded, people praying on the roads. So the rabbis held an emergency meeting. Okay, oh, look at the believers, look how much they are praying in this day of Jumu'ah. If they begin to pray like this, we will be finished. So one rabbi who was a learned one from amongst them said, can you go and inspect how much of these come for the morning Fajr prayer? Go and inspect, there's, there's millions at Juma. check how much come for Fajr. Because we will make a decision or panic upon the number at Juma. We will have to make a decision on the numbers at Fajr. So they came for a few days and they checked. In Fajr there was one or two safs only. He said as long as the Majma stays like this for Fajr, us Jews have nothing to fear yet. Yeah. Huh? When the Majma at Fajr reaches the side of Juma then we Jews will have to begin to feel in the Muslims' power. So this is our condition. This is our wukat. So then we expect Fatah and Nusrat to come raining upon us when we're not fulfilling our responsibilities. So number two, Allah will put uh, this sinners and disbelievers will fear those people who follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three, Rasulullah said, whoever follows my sunnah, Good fortune and risk will be increased for him. I want risk, I want barakah in my life, in my income, in my occupation. Follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. Number four, Allah will strengthen that person in his deen and religion if he follows the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So again, so I was saying that the reason why Allah Ta'ala is angry, number one, we are committing sins openly. Allah protect all of us. And number two, we are leaving the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Small sunnahs, basic sunnahs like sleeping, eating, meeting people, talking, even like that of Miswa. For example, one qissa, I'll finish now, but okay, we'll continue this next week, where with Sahaba Ikram, they feared that they would be in, they were about to get defeated in one battle. So they made mashura, they seen that the kuffar have got the upper hand upon us. So they said, it's been a few days, we haven't made the sunnah of a Miswak. One sunnah is missing inside us. Everyone take out your miswak, begin to brush your teeth in, in, in the method of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> All sahabai kram simultaneously <coughs> took out the miswak, the toothbrush, and they began to make miswak. On the other side of the field is the non-Muslim armies, they're looking towards them. Apas me mashura shuru ho began to talk. Hey, what are these people doing? So one looked, they, they, they're brushing the teeth. They said, no, 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 look carefully. The other one looked, I think they're sharpening the teeth. Okay, they're sharpening the teeth. Why are these people sharpening the teeth in the middle of the battle? So what, the rumor spread, because they are sharpening the teeth because they want to cut us and bite us and eat us when they get, make us captives. I said, they want to eat us. Yes, they want to eat you. I tell you what, drop your weapons, run from here. There's no point trying to fight that nation who want to eat us when they capture us. So they dropped the weapon and they ran away. Sahabai Ikram became victorious. So one sunnah invites the rahmat and the nusrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine when our lives are fully illuminated and beautified with the sunnah of Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine how much rahmat will come pouring in our area, local, national, international level. So these two reasons, we can say, are the downfall of the ummah, committing sins and not being bothered about it, and then uh, leaving the sunnah of the Rasulullah and not being bothered about it. So the whole nation is falling upon us, they're becoming bold, they're becoming more challenging, and they're making matters difficult uh, for the believers. Wherever around the world you see, Muslims are suffering. Look, today's news regarding India, what is happening? Muslims are being burnt alive. Muslims are being burnt alive. Women are being killed. Children are being kidnapped. What is happening in China? China Muslims, Kashmir Muslims, Philistine Muslims, uh, Syria Muslims. Wherever you look, Muslims are being persecuted and tortured. These are prophecies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that this, this time would come. He had mentioned this, he had foretold this. Patient goya for my ki, yes, waqt aane wala hai. And we can see uh, they are fitting uh, into place right now. But the, but the reason of this would be that we are committing sins and we are leaving the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll finish off one point, like I said, there's much more to say. And then what should we do in this situation? Next week, inshallah, I will explain that. With the fadl of Allah, there's 10 things to do in this situation, which Mufti Sahib has mentioned. If, Allah, if I remember, I'll mention those next week. But there's, just take one, one example of our lives as, as, as a whole as Muslims. Look at namaz, namaz, salat. Salah is the symbol of a Muslim in Islam. How many of us are particular about our salah? This is a, a basic requirement. The position of salah in Islam is like the position of a head on a body. The person who has no salah, he has no deen. <clears throat> Without salah, the person, he is close to kufr. A person who says, this is the fatwa of ulama, a person who says, ke, you don't have to pray namaz, it doesn't matter. He becomes a kafir. A person who says, who makes halal haram, istihlal, that, oh, it doesn't matter, you don't have to pray namaz. Who said you have to pray namaz? He becomes kafir. Ask the ulama ikram. This is the matter regarding salah. And again, ortu ka hal dekh lo garo ke andar. They're not particular about namaz. Look at our condition. Five times obligatory namaz, symbol of a Muslim, bedrock of Islam. We see our masjids are devoid of worshippers. How much worshippers do we see? We extending the masjid, second floor, third floor, this extension, that extension. Wait, where is the musallis? Where are the devotees praying salah? In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even the munafiqeen, they would come to Fajr and Isha salah. Even if they would have to crawl, they would crawl to make the way to the masjid. But Allah Ta'ala has blessed with so many things. We have all these damaging tools of shaitan around us. All these obstructions and obstacles which are hindering us from, uh, from our basic requirement of fulfilling this obligation towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So these are what is inviting the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, we have no respect for, for the masjid. We have no respect for the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We are not fulfilling our duty of calling towards God, forbidding evil. So we can see that cities, nations, communities at large, uh, we are suffering. Uh, and Allah Ta'ala has imposed people upon the Muslims who are making them suffer in consequence of what we are doing. So we make dua to Allah Ta'ala that individually as myself and then collectively as a whole that we safeguard ourselves from all types of sins. Allah give all of us the tawfiq. Mm -hmm. Safeguard ourselves from all sins. And if there's some sin that I'm addicted to, habituated to, that I can't leave, then make mashura with the ulama, make mashura with the pious people. Look, I have this problem, I have this addiction of, of maybe fornication, of pornography, of, of, of alcohol, of, of drugs. I can't stop it. Please help me. I need some guidance. And if, if you are sincere in what you want, to, in, what you want to change, Allah will give you tawfiq and strength. Allah will give you strength and you will, inshallah, overpower that obstacle and hindrance in your life. And Allah Ta'ala will give you tawfiq. And then make mashura, stay away from sins, and then try your best. Try your best. I start from today, you start, that let's try to introduce at least one sunnah a day in my life. Inshallah. Everyone say inshallah. inshallah. Just one sunnah a day. <clears throat> Yesterday I was sitting on the table to eat food. You know, today, if I'm at home, I will sit on the floor and eat. Yesterday I was sitting on the floor to eat. 
but I wasn't washing my hands. Now I will wash my hands before eating. Or yesterday I was washing my hands and sitting on the floor. This time I will make sure that I will switch off the TV, mobile phone. I will make shukr of Allah. Talk about the power of Allah. Make shukr to Allah and thank Allah whilst I'm eating. And one every day introduce one new sunnah and then go on to sleeping, eating, going to the bathroom, meeting with your children, etc. And there's so much sunnah, subhanallah. So much sunnah to bring inside our life. The more sunnahs I bring in my life, the more the rahmat and the help and the victory from Allah Ta'ala will reign upon the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala give me the tawfiq. Allah Ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. Wa akhidu da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi wa sallam. Wa nabiju wa mihu wa alayhi wa ilayhi wa bala. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati wa ma yasifun. Wa salamu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi wa sallam.